In this video, I would like to discuss how to set up glue constraints from scratch as we did in class just this past week at both Becker and Leslie. We were pretty much in sync in both courses. So what I have here is a volume Volnoi fracture. So the ISO offset, the scatter, and then I'm using those volume scatter points to fracture or to drive the Volnoi fracture. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is set up two nulls, one for the geometry coming out and one for the constraints coming out. So I'll right click in here and I'll type in N-U-L-L -L for null. So I'll put one null here and I'll title this one out geo, oops, geo frac for fracture. And then I'll just alt drag on that null to create a new one, to create a copy. And in this new one, I'll just name this one out CONS for constraints. So now I'm ready to generate the RBD simulation. So what I'm going to do is put my display flag on the out geo fracture node, this null. Because remember, whatever node has the display flag on it, that's where Houdini is going to make the rest, assemble, and dop import nodes for the simulation. So I'll put my display flag there, come back up to the top level. I'm going to go over to my rigid shelf, right there, rigid bodies, and I'm going to click on the RBD objects. And that will give me a DOP network. And while I'm here, I might as well just jump over to the collision shelf and add a ground plane. So now I have a ground plane here also. And if I run this simulation, I should get some rigid body fractures just falling all apart. So now I'm ready to set up for the glue constraints. So there's two places we need to add nodes. We're going to add nodes in the box object itself, the simulated object, and also in the DOP network. So I'll go to the geometry network first, where the box is. And I'm going to build this off of... Oh! Geez, I didn't even realize I never switched this 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 null onto the con the actual constraint output there. <laughs> it didn't. It hasn't affected anything yet, but it would at this point. So I didn't. When I copied this node using the alt key, I forgot to wire it in here. So make sure you do that now. Okay. So what we need to do first is create the glue constraint. That's what's going to hold everything together. So that's going to be an attribute that we have to create here using the attribute create node. So I'm going to create an attribute create. So I'll right click in here and choose attribute create. And I'm going to place this before the, the out null because the out null is what I'm going to reference over in my DOP network. So I'll wire these in here. And in this attribute create, uh, the first thing we want to do is change the name. We need to tell it to be a constraint. So I'm going to type in, and this, this name has to be specific. This is not one that we can choose our own name. So I'm going to put in constraint underscore name, constraint name. And now with the Volnoi fracture, with, with glue constraints in general, uh, they are on the primitive level, not the point level. So the class here needs to be changed to primitive. And the type needs to be changed to string because what we want to pass over to the DOP network is the glue constraint. So I'm going to type in GLUE. Now this actually can be, you can name this anything you want. This one has to, has to be constraint name spelled perfectly, no caps. And this one could be whatever I want. In this case, I might actually just make it a capital G, glue. So we're generating constraints and the constraint that we're passing over is the glue constraint. And that's all I need to add in here in the Volnoi fracture. Now I want to make sure my display flag is still over on the DOP import because this is these are this is the resulting RBD simulation. So if I if I put my display flag here, I won't ever see the simulation. As a matter of fact, if I put my display flag here and I zoom in on this, we can see it's actually showing me all of the connected pieces of the constraint network. But that's not where I want it. It needs to be over here so I see the results of the simulation when it gets passed back over here from the the DOP network. 
So now I'm going to jump back up to the top level and I'm going to go into the DOP network. So in the DOP network, I'm going to hit the L key to lay out my nodes. And then I need to add two nodes here. I need a constraint network. So I'll right click and go to constraint, the constraint tools. Oh, is it in here or is it in the other one? I usually just type it in, but uh, let me see if we can find it. There it is. It's under constraints, the constraint network. So I'll add that. So the constraint network is we we really could probably wire it in a couple places, but uh, the the method that sort of mirrors what what would happen if we use the glue shelf tool would be to wire it in down here. So after the gravity, the first input are objects to be processed, which is the RBD network. So that goes into the first one. And then I'll, I'll plug that into the output. Now I have an error because I have a second required input here, which is the constraints to create. So that's our glue constraint. So I need another node for that so that I can reference it from the uh, geometry network. So I'm going to right click in here again. Oops, I'm having trouble right clicking because of my limited video recording space. So now I'm going to go to constraint tools and I want to create a glue constraint relationship. That's the other node I need in here. And then I'll wire that into that second input. And now we see that the error has gone away. So there's a couple things I need to do. First of all, in the glue constraint relationship, the data name is what it's looking for. So this name needs to be whatever I had named it over in the geometry network. And if we remember, I named it glue with a capital G. But again, it could be anything you want. You just need to make sure that that name is synchronized between the two nodes. Then I have to come down to the constraint network node and I have to tell it where to find that constraint. So here where it says SOP path, I'll click on the browse button and I'm going to go to object, box object, and I want to reference the out constraint null node that we had created over there. And I'll hit accept. And now, uh, actually, if we want to double check this, I could switch to wireframe mode here, wireframe. And if I see these, the red constraints, then I know that everything has been brought in properly. Now we can control the strength of the glue constraints from the strength parameter right here. So it's set to 10,000. So that should, let me set, change this back from wireframe to smooth shaded. That probably will hold most of it together. I might get a few chipping pieces and that's a little bit out of frame there. Let me zoom out a bit. So let's see it here. There we go, a couple pieces chipped off. So if I lower this value, more pieces are going to come off. And if I increase that value, I could hold it together entirely. Now, the other thing that we did discuss in class two is if we want to animate this, you know, this is one of the, this is the advantage of a glue constraint over the active and inactive methodology for holding parts together in that this whole object can be simulated for doing active and inactive. The inactive points are going to stay in place. So we can't use that for, for an object that we want to move around in the simulation. So that's where a glue constraint works. So I could have this hold together for a few seconds, and then maybe after it bounces, it falls apart. We would do that by animating the glue strength here. But if you do want to animate the glue strength over time, you're going to have to make sure that you also set the default operation from set initial to set always. Because if we have it as set, init set initial, it will only look at the glue strength once at the beginning of the the animation, so it won't matter if we animate it. It will only see whatever strength was at the beginning. Uh, if I do set always, then it will check that over and over again in order to uh, change the strength. So if I wanna animate strength, I need to make sure I set my default operation to set always, and then I should be able to animate the strength value over time and have it the object fall apart. So I hope that helps with reference from what we did in class just this past week.